I'm not taking mine off. Uh, you don't have to. You can probably see from the dogs playing in it, the grass behind us is getting very tall. Which means one of two things have to happen. Either I have to take the tractor up on that hill and mow. Which isn't gonna happen right now because it just rains, so it's just too wet to mow. It's very wet, and when you're mowing on a hillside in the wet, you can skid and do scary 360 moves like I talked about in that video. So, it's time to get the cows out there. They can mow a wet hillside. First day getting the cows out on pasture. Exciting day for uh, for cow people. Look at Bobo eating that giant grass pile. Oh, Bobo's trying. <laughs> One of the reasons we cleared this space out was so we could pull our gator right in and load up all the fencing stuff uh, right up to the shelf. We're still a little bit messy because of the move here. There's still some stuff in the way, but we can get pretty much what we're looking for. So let's, let's pack it up. a drill and some screws if we had to test any of these. So that's one thing we need to get to make uh, make our spring gate work. So now I'll just do this. These things are awesome. Gallagher makes them. They're a big spring, a metal spring with an insulated handle. So you can open and close them, they're a gate. I find it's easiest to fence the first time inside. Sit down with a nice aerial view pulled up on an iPad or a computer screen and put up the fencing the very first time on paper. Once you have it good on paper, then come outside. It's really hard to come outside while you're working, try to figure out where to do your fencing. All right, bud. You ready? It's sunny. Sure is. That's why I have a hat and sunglasses. Wow. What? That's delicious. You got this? Mm -hmm. one, This entire hillside is ledge. <sighs> Not fun. We're gonna try some different stakes.
Tell me when you want me to talk. Austin told me at the end of the season last year, the end of the fencing season, not to use sticks anymore for um, reeling up the fencing, but to have a tendency to be a little impatient. We didn't have any reels here, so I <coughs> used a stick to, <laughs> to hold the rest of my twine. And I've just spent about two hours untangling it, so I guess this is my penance. And I don't think I'll use any more sticks to reel up my twine. Happy? This is proof. <laughs> yeah, see this ridiculous mess that cost us like three hours of our life? Yet yeah, never ever make this mistake when using electric movable fencing. I tried to warn Kay, but I guess it's her penance. Don't roll it onto a stick, don't roll it in a ball. Just get the right equipment, get a reel, and it will work so much quicker. In addition to that obvious tip, I have a couple more good tips for you if you're going to be doing movable electric fencing on your homestead. Do you have anything to say to future you next fall when you go to take down some fencing? I've just let Austin do it himself. Oh, but okay. I don't help. How's that? All right. Hey, I'll take that over that any day. <laughs> hey, Papa Dragon, can you hear me over? I can. Those are. Do they have holes in them? Well, I was just wondering how much do you over? Two would be good. Well, I can carry more than two over. Then bring four. Roger that. Over now. Thanks, honey. We are just about finished up with this big fencing project. I've been at it for the last three days. What we're trying to do is actually uh, have it be a movable paddock that we can every couple days move them because I actually want the cows to mow this hill. I have three tips for you when you're doing movable electric fencing, especially for large livestock. Things that I found over the last couple years of doing this have really helped us make this job easier every time we do it. The first tip is to get yourself a, a really good farm kit who knows how to work hard and get them to help you. Okay, I'm kidding, that's not the tip, but hard working farm kits help. You got them? Yep. The first tip that I have for you if you're doing movable electric fencing for livestock is absolutely before you start trying to fence outside do all the fencing on paper inside so the things you want to consider when laying out a design for movable pasture for your livestock do they have to get back to the barn every day like an animal that's in milk if so you need a long corridor that is always accessible to the animals are you going to move water or leave them access to water we choose to leave water back at the barn so they need a corridor to be able to go and get a drink. Of course, the farthest paddock, we're gonna put water at the farthest point so they don't have to make the long walk back every time. Think about access. As you move them into each individual paddock, where are there going to be gates? How will you create gates into those separate paddocks? Draw it all out first. Is it sunny? Yeah. How's that? Much better. Draw it all out on paper first. Imagine your animals making the walk. Imagine you making the walk. Think about how you're gonna corral them. Do it on paper a couple different times and then you know talk about it with somebody, look for the flaws. It's much easier to redesign your movable electric on paper than it is out in the field when you realize you didn't think about where you were gonna put a gate. Is it gonna be like a square inside the cow's fence in it? That should work great. The second tip that I have, wow, look at that, that vulture up there. If you're doing movable oh electric, goodness. it is so bright, you weren't kidding. The next tip that I have for you if you're doing movable electric fencing, especially for you know the first time, is have a lot of supplies to work with. We have a bunch of different supplies to work with. We have fiberglass poles, plastic step-in posts, we have electric twine, electric tape, we use rubber mallets and sledgehammers, 
post drivers, we have T-posts. The reason you want to have all kinds of different stuff to work with in your electric fencing kit is you constantly yeah. need something I different. If you're putting in a corner post, it's got to be a bit stronger, like one of these There's fiberglass. Fiber in that. Yeah. If you're putting in a corner post, you want to use one of these stronger fiberglass poles. They're better in a strong corner. If you're just doing supports in the middle, these plastic stepping posts work fine. For some animals, just the electric twine is going to be perfect. Other animals, you might want to have electric tape for, especially in areas where you think there's going to be wildlife like deer, because this is a lot more visible. Don't go out tomorrow and buy all this stuff. Start with a small movable setup and add gear as you can afford to bit by bit, and eventually you'll have a really good kit. Bonus tip here, uh, if you have a big electric fencing kit like us with a lot of stuff, Having it in separate buckets and bins just keeps everything organized and when you're out in the field, instead of a big pile in the back of your wheelbarrow or UTV, you have nice organized bins, that really helps. And now I want you to walk all the way back to that hill and then down, okay? Stick this in the ground, put the tape in it, and then turn and go down, okay? Can you handle all that? I know that's a lot. Can I give this to you like a... Legolas's arrows. There you go. You're like an elf. Now turn around. Let your spool work as you're walking. Ready? Go ahead. Now you can let that spool loose, okay? All right, go ahead. You can go, you know, you can go quickly. Another bonus tip for you here. As you can see, when you're working on a big paddock like we have, uh, you're pretty far apart. Having a set of walkie-talkies is really helpful. Hey, Papa Dragon, over. We didn't even plan that. That's just perfect timing. I'm here, over. Well, there's like a deer footprint here, over. Well, that's good. We want some deer up in this field, over. Well, it's gonna be fenced, I don't know if they could make it in, over. They'll be okay, over. You keep keep at that tape. Having a pair of walkie-talkies, these are Midland GXT. They were actually a gift from my mom. She bought us six of them for all of us to use around the homestead. And they've been really handy tools. I'll have a link below for those. A really good set of walkie-talkies. You know, just working on a project like this where you're really far away from each other, it's nice to be able to just say, hey, is this the spot I'm supposed to put the post? Or, you know, the kids often have questions of how the equipment works. H how do I put the twine in the step-in post? You're a lot more efficient if you don't have to walk back and forth for every little question. Drop the spool out of your hand, and then take that stake, put it down into the ground, and then that little flat part, step on it. One good step. If it doesn't work good in that spot, move a little bit because there might be a big piece of rock or ledge. Walkie-talkies can't do everything. I'm gonna have to go put in that post. All right, we are all finished. And this is my third tip to you. Actually, it's like by now my sick. When you first set up your movable electric fencing for your livestock, make it super, super temporary. Don't. Something weird something. happened with my microphone, so I'm re recording this. You're gonna be a weird Godzilla effect with my lips here. The point I was trying to make was keep your fencing, your movable electric fencing, very temporary in the beginning. Be very minimal with your T-posts. Try to use as many step-in posts as possible. Don't pour any concrete corner posts. The fact is, until you've tried your design and run animals through it a few times, you're not gonna know whether or not you forgot about including access for you, or you factored in how to get the water to the animals. The point is, you're gonna find some problems with your design. Try it the first year as temporary as possible, the most easily movable design as you can. And once you have a really good system, then replace step in posts with T posts or even a few fancy concrete poured corner posts. Big day. It's a national holiday in some countries. When the cows get out on grass. Come on.
on, girls. wondering what specific equipment we use for fencing for movable fencing you can find links below and if you're going to shop through amazon use our links it'll help support our channel and not cost you a penny extra and you can do that for anything that you're going to buy on amazon by just clicking this link right here or typing in www.amsteady.com before you shop for anything on amazon including your fencing supplies <music>